What is the current state of your company? How does it function? What is its name and who runs it at the moment? I run a company which is called Patok. We conduct construction works on the project according to the plan. We're also planning to start some new projects here as well. New ones? Yes. Where we're sitting now, a new 80,000 square meter project is going to start. So it's not just the projects that were hurt by the crisis, but new projects as well. Yes. S some preparatory development works have already started. And what about your debt? Our investors are confident that everything will be okay as we have enough assets. During this crisis, we just went into a brief shortage of liquidity as the sales volume decreased and credit funding in some cases was not extended. Therefore, but now none of the investors have any questions. None of them? None of them both in Russia and abroad? Uh, abroad? Look, if I don't know, it means no. None. You mean an explanation of public statements? Yes. If there are questions available, anyone can ask me anything. To say nothing of Twitter, Facebook, Live Journal, and we also have official web pages and so on. We're an absolutely transparent company from the point of view of financial audit and everything else. During the crisis, we did not lose a single asset. Despite Russian specifics, not a single asset was lost. And the company kept working. I'm the CEO of the company, and within this period, I have built two and a half million square meters in Russia and other countries. We have lived through a most complicated period when we had to restructure everything and get a new deal on the maturity term of the coupons and so on. So I see no difficulties on this path. The Federation Tower is being built. We got financial support from Sberbank in the amount of $370 million. Sales are on. We keep working and people keep smiling. Ah yes, I have seen that video, all smiles. Look, in January you had like 512 or 17 million dollars of debts. What's the figure like today? You know, we have our financial director and financial department that will be glad to answer questions like this one, so that there are no mistakes. Besides, we have the company Troika Dialogue that runs this process. They will be also glad to answer such questions. If there had been doubts that we are able to service these debts and so on, then we'd have to choose another way, and that's it. Okay. N now, on the Patok website, there's a link to ALRV. However, in Switzerland, they say it is a separate project with different sources of financing. Could you explain who curates the Manana project and the Swiss mountains, and how it all adds up. I don't get it. There's a legal model. I'm the major shareholder, and I have the controlling interest. As to funding, we have the project manager, Vladimir Marakutsa, as of the moment at least. Sure, when we launch a project, we designate separate sources of financing. Then we decide if it's good for us. We attract funds to groups and the groups allocate funding for the project. Depending on the costs, the market state and so on, we can attract specific funds for this project if we need it. 
So the structure of funding will be defined later and we have done some studies in two directions already. But we received the final court decision that we are allowed to build there just yesterday. And the process had lasted for about seven years, I believe. Therefore, there was no sense in elaborating any final version, since within a year or two, we would have to cross everything out and start it from scratch. We are financial consultants on this issue and consultants with the concept of sales and realization. We are specialists in building everything to comfortable and ecological standards and you can see with your own eyes how I live. We understand certain mechanisms but Switzerland has its own specifics and we would not like to substitute the local companies that are professionals in their territory like real estate brokers, lawyers, financiers. Everyone has to do their own professional business while we need <coughs> to have the main issue of the building permit resolved. Then we could take on the stage of defining the funding structure, launching the first construction phase and everything else. So by the 10th or 15th of September we could have elaborated the structure and vision of the project. Uh, okay, so the funds that have already been invested, about 25 million francs, where do they come from? We have the, the chief financial officer in the company and he will be glad to answer questions on the funding structure. Basically, a part of the funds was mine, the other part came from the company. That's it. How did the project start? How come you got interested in Switzerland and how do you estimate the project? First of all, I'm fond of various sports. And I often visit Switzerland. We even held corporate outings once a year there. Every year, yes. We go snowboarding, play hockey and so on. Where? In Zermatt. Usually it happens in December, and in December there is still, still no snow in the Menona. Then vacations begin, so we do it before the end of the year. So you like Switzerland? Sure. First of all, it's beautiful, comfortable. The place where we are going to build the resort is very quiet, comfortable, unspoiled from energy point of view. So in fact we can calmly and beautifully associate the houses to the landscape there without violating the general structure of landscape or bothering the people who live there. I believe this project will be a 100% success and will be acclaimed in the world. As far as our approach is concerned, in our in our project portfolio there was a building in London and we are still having a trial there. with the area of 175,000 square meters and we have also negotiated the approval of building a tower there. We wanted to have it like in every interesting country. There should be an interesting project to carry out. Do you know there is this game Monopoly? Well, Monopoly is a bloodthirsty game as it implies you have to take something from others. But what we do is the most peaceful profession in the world. You make something from nothing. People move in, give birth to children and so on. There are also lots of other businesses. But these businesses mainly share or redistribute something. While in our case we create something or nothing. 
of nothing. And it stays for dozens and even hundreds of years. So construction is the most honest and clean business of all. It is ecologically and energetically clean. I may have already said that elsewhere, but when I was in the army I understood that if I ever wanted to do anything, that would be a creation of something new, so that people smiled and were in good spirits. Anyway, I like what I'm doing. So, so you think the Swiss are smiling at the project? Yes, of course. Are you sure? I am. I know. This project is quite old. And I'm sure it will bring new energy to that community. I'm absolutely sure that schools and kindergartens will start working and so on. It is still a very complex issue. And now that we've got approval for the project, I'd like to thank everyone who took part in this process. It has taken a lot of time, but maybe it's a usual thing, it's hard to say. But I'm sure the energy that has been and will be spent on this project will be a positive one. And I will definitely do my best to have a bonfire burning there and make people warm and comfortable. So you personally participate in this project. It's not only the company, but it is close to you too, I gather. Sure. While the approval process was in the works, it's a complicated bureaucratic issue, but I created the, pr the concept, the idea from A to Z. I myself flew there and chose the houses we would build. Moreover, it is our basic principle that no one can just design a project and that's it. When I launch a project, I will sit down together with the architect, talk to him for hours, we'll look at the design and discuss it. Before I approve the project, it has no right to live or be discussed elsewhere. I believe it is my primary function, like if we take a housewife, she picks every window, curtain, every little thing herself. Same story here. That's why I believe that if a company has no master, no host, who directly takes part in the activity like Trump, who chooses a design for his public spaces and buildings, that's not right. And when a company has no face of its own, when everything is hidden behind the name and uh, it is not clear who made the decisions, who chose the colors, the curtain walls, the glazing in each zone, well, I can tell you everything about each project, each zone, how they were built and so on. It's the main thing. It's a complex issue, sure. We design the project, we consider who will be its buyers, how to increase its funding and so on, but I will never, never delegate these functions to anyone else. So each year you fly there, go snowboarding and people know you in general. Dirty money, and so on. What's your take on this? Is it insulting or you believe it's a cliché and don't care too much? Firstly, of course it is insulting. It's not bad when a liar is told he's a liar or when he has no conscience and people tell him about that. Human envy has no limits. First of all, I know. 
I'm not an oligarch. And what is it actually? It's something else. I am a businessman. So, now you're a businessman again? Yes, as of July 6th. That's one thing. Secondly, as far as dirty money is concerned, we have never had a single government contract on principle. We were the first in the country to get this transparent gap auditing system. We have been checked so many times before opening accounts or launching projects in London, America, Switzerland, France and so on. And these are long and complicated procedures. So if they had had something on us, it would have been made public long ago. But you won't find it anywhere, neither in Swiss press nor in French, no illegal activities. And what about all those cliches like Putin's businessmen, a gang or a clique, things like that? I know it myself, as a journalist, I know how to attract the audience. Wild Russians in quiet Swiss mountains, something like that. There is a touch of truth uh, in what you said. Sure, there is a general picture, and I'm not going to reassure anyone. Just you can't consider a whole bunch of people as one and paint them all with one color. When you asked for an interview, I specifically said, go and see everything in Moscow with your own eyes. I believe people will figure it out in any case. Time will show. In general, I think that we can judge a person and his deeds only through a prism of time. If I have to take responsibility for the whole Russian business community upon myself, I'm surely not ready to do that. I'm engaged in my own business. I have been doing for 20 years. And I have my own principles that I do not breach. I'd like the things you said to have changed for the better, sure. Now, do I do anything to change that concept? Yes, a lot. Starting from the fact that we launch projects in many countries and do what no one has done before us. Just take the Federation Tower. It's one of the best buildings erected. It received its world prize in 2008. No one could have ever imagined that the Russian developer would get it. And we never actually pay for prizes. It's a principal moment. You know, some people in Russia like to collect prizes, diplomas, and so on. Not us. I do just what I do. I like the plans and people like to live in our buildings and work in our offices. But I don't think it is right to hold myself responsible for the world or Russian business systems, so I won't do it. On my part, I'm sure that the project will be great. You said it takes time. So you have patience, and you are ready to wait for compliments. Or you are planning to eat your Thai again if they don't like it, or what? You know, I would be hurt if I had such a nice project, and the public re reaction was so elementary negative. You know, sometimes I really want to say, go to hell, honestly speaking. 
And if I get such a mood, I just sit and think for 10 days. You're talking Switzerland, but let's have a look at Russia. Have you ever read anything positive about the Federation Tower? Like at last, our Russian guy has received a prize for the best building in the world. Well, this is public media. We never write anything positive. I hope I understand people in Switzerland. I respect their mood. Now that we got the permit, I'm going to answer all the questions. But prior to that, it made no sense. Like, will it happen or not? And I'm sure that people will watch this complicated interview and make a note that I have not seen any preliminary questions. So, I hope the Swiss will watch it and understand that if from some point of view I bring no comfort to them, then I will have to think it over. It's very important to me that I do not that I do not cause any cultural dissonance with my projects there, that I cause no irritation and so on. That's why I always try to act delicately without violation of the existing atmosphere. Switzerland is Switzerland is a multinational country, so I don't believe they really think this nation is bad or that community is bad. They have a um, multi-faith, multi-confessional culture, I know it, and it is organized to the principles of groups and blocks in every field. There is no bad Swiss, no bad, no bad Frenchman, no bad Russian as a total nation. But there are specific bad people. Somewhere we have more such people, somewhere less. I understand the feelings of the Swiss as they're an accomplished nation. And I would be worried too if some alien company showed up in my area. The fact that they're worried is good, actually, because the worst thing is when people stop worrying at all. Most horrible crimes were committed with a silent agreement of the others. Yeah, I see. So, you are ready to convince them. That's what we're doing already now. Sure, I'm ready and I will do it. Moreover, this permit and the future construction obligations are a certain advance to me and I understand the responsibility lying on my shoulders from the point of view of the prospect, prospects of Russian-Swiss relationships. It is probably overstated, but it is one of the largest projects and it can be crucial for the future relationship of the two countries. That's why I'm going to use my best efforts and all the experience I have it is most important that people have no doubts that we can do it. We have done projects on the world scale. 
we are inviting best architects to participate in this project. In this project, lots of consultants. It is an international project. We have invited Swiss and European architects, financial experts, and so on. Not only wild Russians. Hmm. Well, jeering is the lowest grade of humor, by the way. Yeah. You know, various nations can sit down together. and communicate for as much as they want, like G8, G20 and so on. But to some extent, these are all virtual things. We have checked it out at Federation Tower. We have Americans, Germans, the Chinese working there. So when, by the construction of a building, various nations and various systems get united. It's like the Tower of Babylon, but without negative connotations. When people get together and start to communicate every day, then they start understanding each other's mentality and many things get synchronized. You can read lots of books about this, but what's happening on such construction sites is fundamental. Maybe our children will be able to realize this, not us. Because it is built for years, we won't be here already. But the way it will operate depends on us now. How are you going to interact and work with ecologists on site? You have said so many times that this project is good and clean, it does not interfere with anything, does not harm nature, but some people there do not agree. So there is controversy. Look, let's hold the Swiss court in respect. I have never spoken on this issue. There is a court ruling, right? So what's the use of discussing it? First, the judgment has been delivered. Second, the questions asked by the Greens can be resolved within the project on site. Should there be problems, we'll sit down and discuss how to get rid of them. But if you start discussing all such things like interaction with ecologists before the construction starts. It will be just hot air, honestly speaking. So we will just do this project.